Hey, it's JC14241 once again with NASCAR Thunder 2004. And in this episode of our third season in career mode, we are going to be completing race 4 of 36, which is the Bass Pro Shops NBNA 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. In the last episode, we went to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, where we finished in fifth place after starting all the way in the middle of the field because my qualifying went terribly. Yes, yeah, it's like sometimes the qualifying is hard and then the actual race is um, easy for whatever reason. But in all reality, I went to that race getting banged around by Bobby Labonte, and then I got back on the track in LePage, Jeff Burton. Uh, it, it was a frustrating race. I could have won it if there was no error during my pit stop with the guy, you know, trying to put the tire on. He could, you know, fix the, the drill or whatever it was. But we're going to be using Kamikaze Games paint scheme in this episode just because it's Atlanta, and I don't know. I, I just got, I got to pick one. But in the last episode, was it Matt Kids that won the race? Uh, yes, we've Terry Labonte or Bobby Labonte, Tony Stewart, Matt Kenseth. This intro is garbage, just like me. I am in second place, 18 points behind Kenseth, who just got that points lead in that race. It's like whoever wins the race gets the points lead. I don't know if that's gonna be the same thing whenever we do this one. Maybe I can win the race and get the points lead, or maybe just on consistency. I don't think I'm win Atlanta. Atlanta's even more difficult than Las Vegas. It's one of the hardest tracks on the schedule. Um, it used to be Indianapolis would be the hardest one for me, but I've gotten better at that recently. This one, uh, it's all about the car and. It's still a good bit short on what it needs to be. I need more power. I need a better body for more drafting and I guess downforce. I'm always having problems getting it to bite in the corners here. But we can qualify well. So just hope that I'm getting warmed up on my first qualifying lap. So we'll quick select the chassis, engine, and body. We've got a used chassis from the last episode and then fresh engine and body right here. Car rating of 72. I mean, this is what we need at Atlanta. You know, fresh engine and fresh body. And hopefully the chassis is not too worn down to give us the grip we need here. So let's go out there and uh, try to get them sponsors of expectations. In qualifying and the race itself, we're gonna be using 20 PSI and negative 0.5 turns of wedge. I would take out wedge to get it to turn better in the corners, but yeah, it would just go sliding all over the place and you did at Homestead. As for the tire pressure, like, I don't want the tires to wear down too quickly, and honestly, it really wouldn't do that much for me taking out tire pressure because then we'd be having not enough speed, just more acceleration. And, Ah, uh, see, I, I need the speed in itself, and the freaking AI they're going to be pulling you with their draft. So just hope the body's strong enough at this point for the draft to pull me really well. That was an awful warm-up lap, so let's really hope that I am absolutely perfect on this one. God, not even the top 30 on the first lap. That, that's, hey, it's not too bad. Oh, the slide. Okay, we slid up a little bit, but it's not really starting to underdraft the corner until, like, the last freaking second on the exit. Okay, going to turn three. Well, all we have to do is lap the gas. No brakes right here. Slid off. And it will arc. It's trying to slide up as we hit the center. Come on, keep it off the wall. Keep it off the wall. Don't, don't you push me, car. You, you know what you can do. Okay, how was that? A little bit better. 30.28. That was like a half second improvement. 11th place. Don't they want us to start like in the top 10? And out back, that is. Or maybe it's top 15. I, I wish it's top 15. I don't even know what my expectations for this contract um, are. Which is stupid because I just said like we're trying to meet them goals, but I don't know what my goals are. Wow. Oh, uh, well, um, I know it's top five for Coca-Cola. That's just seeming really unlikely with Atlanta. I'm going to have to really be on the ball today. Dale Jarrett on the front row next to Bobby Labonte. And Bobby Labonte yet again on the front row. I think it was the second race in a row. Green flag is out. We're underway for 32 laps here at Atlanta. I'm trying to keep Kevin Harvick from passing me as soon as the race starts. No. No, I'm going to stay behind. I'm going to keep my 11th place start right here. Golly, like how many times? How is this just... Acceleration, 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 acceleration. You can't tell me it's something wrong with how I'm setting up my gears because we're all in fourth gear. <sighs> what is this? I just, I can't do anything. Okay, well, let's catch back up to those guys or my car could tighten up on the exit of turn four. Well, I need a drafting buddy anyway, so I mean, if you're faster than me truly, Jeff Burton, pull me to the top ten and we can actually get the racing. But golly, I, I don't care how great this damn game is. It might be my favorite game in the whole freaking world, but these freaking restarts ruin it. Like, it's just never, never, ever can these restarts be good enough for us to just be you know, just as good as theirs. I don't know what, there's always some kind of problem. Okay, so Jeff Burton, helping me pull the top 10. Not giving me that much room. We are sliding up and letting off the gas so I don't hit him. And he hits the outside wall. I would like to clear you now. I'm tired of having a car on my outside to keep you from taking corners properly. Okay, there we go. Go fight in, hitting the freaking apron. Joe bite in the corner. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to share a draft with Rusty Wallace, but I'm behind Bill Elliott like a moron. Here we go. Diving into turn one. 
You don't overbreak it. Should be fine, just like this. Oh my gosh, here comes Jeff Burton again. Okay, come on. Jeff Burton, decide. Are you coming? Or are you going? Because it's like, I pass him up just like that, and then he's like right back behind me. Also, this is not Bill Elliott. This is Jeremy Mayfield. I wouldn't fucking know. Their cars look exactly the same. It's been three years, and we're still driving the same cars. What the hell, Evernham? Ugh. I mean, it's not as bad as Joey Logano driving the freaking same old 22 paint scheme for like the, the ninth season with the team. I mean, even before he was there, that was the paint scheme that Kurt Busch had. And who had the other 22 car? AJ Allmendinger or Sam Morris Jr.? I don't remember who drove it. That same paint scheme. It's like four or five different drivers. Okay, so in the ninth place, diving past Michael Waltrip. I don't remember where we were running whenever we were doing this race at the end of the season before pit stops happened, but I think we're running better now. Maybe, maybe not. But after I pass Robbie Gordon, for whatever reason, he is running in sixth place right now. Uh, there's not going to be much else to do unless I'm sharing draft with him and somehow it can actually help me. Jimmy Johnson is all over my ass, and he is pretty freaking fast, so I think if I were to let him by, I wouldn't be able to actually stick with him due to draft. He would probably just pull away because he's just that fast, and I'm pulling him off that much. Okay. The brakes. Oh, Ricky Craven, don't block me. You know I'm waiting. And there we go. Completing the pass right here. Trying to stay behind Robbie Gordon. Why are you giving Ricky Graham the draft? You don't need it. I need it. It's, it's a biased statement, but... Okay, here we go. Another dive into turn one. It's going to overdrive it, but this is going to allow Jimmy Johnson to pass us. And if he's truly faster than fine, go ahead, but... Ah! I, I'm loose off the fucking corner is all shit. Holy crap. Never mind. We can't use Jimmy Johnson for draft because my car got so loose that I just turned down into him. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with him so I can maybe pull him back towards me. I, I, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. Fuck me, man. I can't just control my race car. Can't control my shit. Well, that, that was a pretty long green flag run. It's still not as long as good as the one last time we came here was on the channel. No, Ricky Rod, go away. I, oh, my goodness. Everybody that's not who I passed after all that you know, green flag run, anybody that I didn't pass is coming up behind me because they're, they've been waiting. It's like everyone... All the bad guys start up front, all the good guys start behind me. <laughs> okay, well, it's halfway point. This car is starting to act kind of weird. Weird as in, like, the back end starting to kick out because of rear, uh, worn rear tires. Okay, let's slow it down. Don't spin it. Don't speed in the pit road either. Okay, there we go. That was a perfect road entry. Way better than the last one we had here with Mark Martin dumping me going in. And then crashing into me at the very end of the races. We're battling it out like crazy. I remember Johnny Benson making people angry. Everybody was crashing into me. I was going across the start finish line at the end of that race. It's, you know, the race where we made Kevin Grubb really angry. Uh, and you know, at, at Phoenix, it was just a um, chance to win the race. It didn't happen. And of course, um, I'm trying to have myself a, a decent run. My Jackman falls over. Why? Why? I, I got a better picker at the end of my last season, and this is apparently better. Let's run seventh place, you know? Seventh place? It's pretty darn good. Okay, well, we're free to merge right here. There's no one coming. Got a big old pack of five or six cars coming up behind me, but we'll get up to speed and be able to hold them off because we've got the freshest tires out here. At least I hope that's what can happen just because, I mean, think about it. This car, it's just, it becomes rather awful when anyone is just pack stacking up behind me, all because of this car having worn tires. Well, fresh tires seem to be just fine. I can hold my own. I can leapfrog with, you know, everyone sharing draft and stuff. It's been a while ago, like once I ran out of cars to leapfrog with, like they start getting too spaced out, I don't have enough draft for me to pull me to the next car and it's just I'm stuck blocking everyone as the other guys pull away. But, um, we'll stick with Ricky Rudd right here and the Elliot Saller in front of him. We're in 17th with hits up are still going. What the hell are these guys slowing down so much for? Don't hit Ricky Rudd. I had to make a really quick movement and Elliot Saller almost kills me. That's why it's going so slow. Okay, we still got a ton of people pitting, so maybe I didn't lose freaking uh, 10 positions because of that horrible pit stop. Uh, maybe it could be just like 5 or 3, I don't know. Uh, we're overdriving turn 1. I can't get off of Ricky Rudd. And there goes Kevin Harvick passing us. I need to focus on the racetrack. Stop focusing on all the stuff going on in the pit stops. And Jeff Gordon, you need to go away. Good old dive into turn 3. Okay. Harvick, pull me with that draft. There we go. I let Jeff Gordon get his nose underneath me. Now I know we can get back to Harvard. We got fresh tires and he can pull me in just like that. I know we can. I'm not even gonna doubt it. Okay. Hugging that mayonnaise line, that white line. Pull me, pull me, pull me like pull-ups. 
Come on, Harvick. Why is it not? I'm in ninth place. So yeah, I well, lost two positions as of now, and I think that's it because anybody else, like just two cars on pit road. Yeah, that's everyone. No more pit stops happening. Pull me! Give me you! Give me you! I want you, Harvick. Fuck this car. It's just still not good enough in Atlanta, and it irritates the crap out of me. Well, I guess we're going back down with the uh, Coca-Cola sponsorship thing because we can't get a top five in this race. Same goes for Alpex, which is falling short on everything by a little bit. What? Can you stop getting loose off a of turn two? I don't need that crap. Yeah, Harvick's gone. Maybe someone else that is not having the best of runs will fall back and we'll catch them. As my car just does not bite through turns three and four, Ricky Rudd gets past us. But maybe he's not way faster than me and I can just trap him and we'll be fine. No! Jeff Gordon, go away. It won't turn. It won't even start the corner. Ah! Hate this car. Piss me off nonstop. It won't start a turn. It can't get, continue going through a turn. It can't do anything with the turn. It's like the same problems. It's just not as bad. But whenever I'm trying to race guys like this, it feels just as bad. Whenever we were doing the first race here last season. No. Oh, trying to stop Jeff Gordon from passing. I'm trying to race right now, and I'm not even trying to hit him. I'm just loosening all over the damn place. It's steering sensitivity is like crazy. Ugh, can I catch back up to Ricky Rudd? I mean, we're still running the top 10. Top 10 would be okay considering the circumstances. Still better than last time we came here. I'm giving it all I got. I'm just racing my heart out. and It don't mean anything whenever it comes to this track. You need a 76, 77 car rating here. and We're still on 72, but 72 is enough with a bunch of other tracks like Las Vegas, for sure, Rockingham, Phoenix. Uh, it was almost there at Homestead. Oh, whatever. We ain't catching Ricky Rudd. Ah, uh, we'll get back to you whenever shit starts happening so I can just focus. Leaders coming off the turn four to start the final lap. I've been holding up Jeff Burton for about you know, three or four laps now. Well, we're starting to close in on a group of three cars, or maybe just one of the cars in there was slowing them up, and now we're really starting to close in on them. I don't know, but we're not going to get to them. I just need to make some good corners and uh, close down ones on Jeff Burton. Freaking sun's always getting my eyes on turn one. I, I'm just going to keep on parking the bus. There's no reason for me to be trying to go any faster than necessary to hold them off. Uh, on worn tires, like, whenever it starts to finally come to the end of a run, the back end of this car starts sliding all over the darn place. And I have to be aware that there's not much turning that I have to do just because of what it's doing to the car. And I spent such a fucking long time holding off Jeff Burton. This car gave up in the last turn. It just, it can't grip. It can't start a turn. It can't do anything. Tony Stewart wins. He's definitely the new points leader. Hopefully I'm still in the top five. Surprisingly, Tony Stewart's second win of the season actually doesn't get him the points lead. He's still four points behind me in the point setting, so his Rockingham and Las Vegas races must not have been that good. I wasn't really paying attention to them. But Matt Kenseth, he finished behind us, so now we're closer to the points lead instead of being further behind. We're still in second place, nine points behind him. Wow, I, the point settings does not at all reflect what just happened in that race, but it's just, you know, I'm being a little more consistent, even though that was my worst finish of the season outside the top 10 and whatnot. Okay, driver respect levels. Earl Hall, fancy driver, he ain't going away until he comes back to race again. And he's my only negative. Everyone else is positive from Sharon Draft at Atlanta and Daytona. I've been doing a lot of bumping and banging in the past three races, and yet for some reason that's not really showing up that much on here at all. I guess it was all minor stuff. We're going to be using Dale Reynolds painting in the next episode whenever we go to Darlington in a couple days. Take a look at the shop edition. We've got seven races left until the boring plates come in for the engine power. It'll be more powerful. But it's going to be boring. It'll be no Dragon Ball Z engine. I don't know. Okay, so we've got some work to do on this chassis in 95 condition. 71 tire grip and 66 tire wear. Uh, so we, we did just do a shop edition for tire wear, and that helps this go from 69 to 71. That's a two increase I like. It, it's not that big of a deal just yet, but it's going to continue to grow, and we'll find ourselves having a fantastic chassis that doesn't wear down too quickly. Ah, I can feel the tires wearing down Atlanta a little too much for my liking. So well, that's all that we have to worry about right now. We're going to be using this in the next race, and this is going to come in in three races. So, I should consider... Maybe I should have just, um... Sold that, because this comes in in three races. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll use this, like, in that one race after we use this one for two races, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of it. I, I don't know what we'll do. Something like that, I guess. And then, we've got this. We're using the next episode. We've got four races left until this comes in, and uh, we've got one race left until this engine comes in right here okay and then we got bodies we have one race left until our, our new one comes in some really good downforce and some eh, decent drafting same stuff we always have with bodies and then, uh, once that comes in we'll start doing work on this we can start building another new one 
I don't know what we'd be capable of. I was gonna check it out, but it's telling me that it's busy and it's not letting me see the future. Darn it. I love the future. Sometimes, it depends on how good it is. So, we didn't finish in the top five, so the happiness goes back down to 80. It's just fluctuating. It goes 80, 82, 80. Oh my goodness. And then you got the secondary. I didn't do that job. It wanted us to qualify in the top 10, and I was one position short. And I actually finished where I started. I'm just not realizing that. Wow. It's just one position better than we did last time at Atlanta. Golly, it's like taking forever for us to actually make progress at Atlanta in specific. And, well, still in the top five, so happiness goes up. Or it doesn't go up, but it neutralizes. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'll see you guys in a couple days at Darlington with Dale Reynolds Paint Scheme. Ah, uh, can we win at Darlington yet? I mean, let's try to think about Las Vegas. It's harder than us for Darlington, so by now, I should be able to start close up front at Darlington, run the top five, and maybe win. As long as the pit crew stops making fucking mistakes. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.